So a tenant was kicked out of their apartment because of Facebook post in a group for other tenants. So this tenant said that he started the Facebook group as a way to create sort of like a marketplace so that tenants can buy and sell different things and maybe post different notices to each other, basically to create a community. And it eventually devolved into tenants also talking about issues going on in the building, which of course, you know, resulted in complaints in terms of, hey, this is going on, that's going on, or watch out, you know, there's flies over here or this door's broken and whatever the case may be. So the landlord has decided to not renew this man's lease because he started the group. Now, I'm actually not surprised by this because I have a story of my own that I'm going to share after we watch this together and I give some commentary. Um, but I feel like we're going to see this happening more often if this type of stuff is allowed. And it also is why people are too afraid to actually post real honest reviews when they're living in a place. And then even when they move out, they don't want to receive retaliation or not get their deposit back or something else. So a lot of times when you're looking at places and you're trying to figure out where you should move, <laughs> because moving is a lot of money and it's a big deal because it's where you live, um, the reviews aren't always as honest. So that's why when you see really negative ones, you really need to take that into consideration um, because a lot of times people are afraid to post negative reviews and they only post things that are glowing or they do it the moment they move in and that's it. Um, but yeah, let, let's get into this and um, we'll talk about it in a moment. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Reality Check with Jess. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new here, please make sure that you like and subscribe and ring that bell. And if you're a returning viewer, hi, guys. So let's get into this one. Let me get back to that screen because, you know, this is wild. Um, but like I said, I am not surprised because I had a situation, well, not my situation, essentially, but where I lived previously, someone had started a Facebook group. I'm not on Facebook right? I'm not on Facebook like that. I don't really do social media like that. I really try to stay away from it. Um, but I was like, well, you know, maybe I'll create an account, you know, join this group to find out what's going on with other tenants, especially considering what I had been going through. And all of a sudden the group was gone almost as quickly as it had started. And from what I was told, allegedly, is that the person who had started the group um, started getting messages from the property manager asking to be in the group. And, you know, from what I was told, allegedly, that person was saying, well, you know, no, because it's for tenants only. And that they felt like they were kind of being harassed and intimidated because um, the person kept asking them, the property manager kept saying, well, no, I need to be a part of this. I need to see what's going on. And so they didn't want the drama and they were kind of scared. And so they just closed the whole group. Like I said, allegedly, all right, I wasn't privy to the conversations that happened. I don't know exactly what went down, but this is what a third party had told me um, and apparently what was relayed to them. So I am not necessarily surprised by this. Um, and also because I know that, let's say, for example, if a place is a brand new place, people are coming in, they're writing glowing reviews, um, but then you don't really hear the truth until folks are moving out because that's when folks feel free to say it. Even, actually, even if it's not a brand new place, people are not going to say anything lots of times while they're living there because they don't want to be retaliated against. They don't want to have issues when they're moving out. They don't want to feel uncomfortable leave, uh, living there. So... Like I said, this is not surprising, um, but let's take a look at what this news report says and talk about it. It was in a Facebook group. Then Tampa Bay's Chris Hurst spoke with a man who says now he doesn't feel welcome at his own home. It makes me feel this big. Robert Dressler says he's sick of the way his landlord is treating him and other residents. They make me feel like some kind of like middle school kid. He lives here at the Slade at Channelside. The location here is amazing. I'm just so settled in. But soon he'll be living somewhere else. They just sent me a non-renewal notice. Kicked out at the end of his lease. I asked them why. 
and they had said it's because of the negative energy you create in a Facebook group. Dressler created a Facebook group when he first moved in as a marketplace for residents, but now they use it to make repeated complaints about doors that don't lock, fruit flies coming through drains, and... Here's a photo of the amount of poop that I found on the floor one time right by an entranceway just trying to warn people so that they don't step in it. In an email exchange Dressler gave us, the property manager says he quote fostered a negative environment for the building, deterred prospects from renting, and made multiple false and misleading claims about the building. I have since asked them to explain exactly what has been misleading in any of my Facebook posts and they've just ignored me. They ignored us too, and we've given them more than 24 hours to respond to our questions for why they decided to make Dressler find a new place to live. An attorney told him he had a case, but that it's not worth the cost. At the end of the day, when you're talking about paying lawyers and fees, um, the cost outweighs the cost of just moving. And I think that's something people always forget because folks love to say, oh, sue them and do this and do that. We'll sue them how? With what money? And is it really worth it in the end? And they know that. And that's the problem with our legal system in this country is that it is very cost prohibitive. And not only that, then time. Time that goes into it. These are corporations. They can drag you through the court system for as long as they feel like it. As of now, he can stay until the end of his lease in 2025. Probably gonna be awkward. But the next several months won't be home sweet home. In Tampa, Chris Hurst, 10 Tampa Bay. Now checking the law here, landlords usually don't have to give a reason for a non-renewal, but it is illegal for them to retaliate against tenants in certain cases, including participating in a tenant organization. Only a lawsuit, though, would answer if a Facebook group qualifies as one. And that's the thing. Does a Facebook group qualify as a tenant organization? And then there you go, going through the court system again. You know what I mean? Like, it's not clear cut and it's not as easy as some people like to make it out to be. So I wanted to share this with you guys. What are your thoughts on this? What do you think? And can you foresee this happening more? Because don't forget, Corporations have bought up most of uh, the rental properties, right? So nine times out of 10, someone's running from a corporate landlord and they've got deep, deep pockets. So, you know, people are paying a lot of money, but then they have to live under conditions that are just atrocious or not suitable. You know what I mean? And yet if they speak out against it, they can lose their home or get retaliated against. You know, and then don't forget when you're applying for a new place, they'll ask, well, did you get a non-renewal? Would the landlord want to rent to you again? Sometimes you need a landlord reference. So they know that they are putting the person in a really precarious position. And this is how you keep people subdued with fear. Let me know what you guys think. Um, have you ever experienced this or can you foresee this happening a lot more? Uh, thank you again for joining me and I'll speak to you on the next one. Thank you.